Mm -hmm. Black Chemical Romance is my favorite band ever, and I've wanted to talk about them for some time, but never really knew how. When they unexpectedly reunited at the end of last year, it was a better time than ever, but I still wasn't really sure how to go about it. A four minutes four on their discography didn't feel right, it felt like I could leave everything at It's Awesome and call it there, but I could also spend the entire episode talking about half of any of their albums. But now that they announced the full US tour and I got my tickets, I figured I would focus on an angle that I haven't really seen anyone else talk about, which is a very specific area of music creation that I'm very interested in, and that is album construction, the thoughtful ordering of songs on an album. See, MyCam has always been intensely artistically deliberate in every choice they make. I mean, you could look at their new promotional videos for an indicator of that. Everyone in the band treats art very seriously and wants to take part in the creation of whatever MCR puts out. That includes the music, shirts, artwork, live theatrics, costumes, music videos. On top of that, the four main MCR albums are all varying levels of concept albums. There's the obvious ones like Black Parade, telling the story of the patient's journey through death, and Danger Days talking about the killjoys in a totalitarian apocalypse. But there's also Three Cheers, which works on a couple different levels, whether it's horror movies, or the loss of a loved one, or the concept of the demolition lovers, which is introduced back in Bullets along with other supernatural elements. So naturally, with such a narrative backbone to all of the albums, the songs are bound to be structured in a way that tells those stories. But that's not exactly what I want to focus on. I'm going to look at the song's full package musically. I'm bound to talk about lyrical content a little bit, but I'm also going to look at things like tempo, intensity, the general feel of the songs, and how they work together. The reason I find this area so interesting is with my chem, there's a pattern to their album construction. I always feel that artists who put thought into where the songs go on the album in terms of telling a story or conveying a chain of emotions or giving a certain experience are way more interesting than bands who just put a bunch of songs together that were made for the time. My chem is clearly very cognizant of how they place their songs on the albums because certain songs come earlier and certain songs come later. I've broken up that pattern into eight categories. It's not perfect, there's a little bit of bleed with some songs lapping into multiple categories, but I still feel that it does generally show what my chem wants you to experience listening through any one of their albums. Oh, and this excludes things like intros, interludes, and narrative breaks. So let's jump into it. So the first category is generally a really big intro. It helps to set the mood for the entire album and the lyrical content kind of gives some hints as to where things are going to go as well. Well. They're usually really intense songs and also usually singles. Putting singles first on an album isn't really a specific My Chem move, but it's usually a single that veers pretty close to the other songs on the album, so it's a good indicator of what you're about to get into. The second song always keeps up the intensity, and I would describe all these songs as driving. It's very non-stop instrumentally, it just wants to keep the energy up from that first song. This leads into the third category, which I call Mix It Up. This is where the band usually introduces new sounds or feelings to the album, and generally this is where they put their dancey kind of songs. If there's more than one song in this category, then usually it's heavier or quirky in some way compared to the songs that just came before. Category 4, much like Category 1, is a huge staple to the album. MCR goes really big here again, it's very dramatic like the openers. These songs are often singles as well, they're often very musically complex or ambitious, and lyrically they really reinforce the themes of the album. If the first song was setting the tone for the whole thing, then this point in the album is the thesis statement. After that really big explosive song, we get the fifth category, which cools things down. Lower the volume, usually the lyrics are a little more somber or a bitter sweet or just sad in general. These songs generally just give you some room to breathe after the intensity that you were just listening to. Category 6 is Mix It Up 2, Jam Town. This is usually the biggest and the most diverse category of any of the albums. Again, there's some big shifts in sounds here, usually this is where their heaviest songs go, sometimes it gets a little bit softer in between, but really this section is usually kind of the meat of the album. Consequently, this is the category where basically all of my favorite songs come from. After that, there's Category 7 with one final reprieve before the end which is a category that I call Heartbreaker. It's usually a very bittersweet, sad, again, a little bit quieter song generally. It's one last moment of calm before the ending storm, and it's just usually straight up sad. Lastly, MCR goes out with a huge bang at the end with the final category. They match all the fire and the intensity of the opening song and the midpoint song, and these songs give the albums a high octane lasting memory. So we have our structure now, we can see the blueprint that MCR uses. How well does it apply to all the albums? Well, I mean, 
I, I hope it would apply pretty well, otherwise why would I be making this video? But yeah, it lines up really well, especially across four different albums. First, I'm gonna talk about the ones that don't work so perfectly, which is the first and last album. For Bullets, Honey fits perfectly into category one, and Vampires fits into category two really well with that driving constant drum beat, but it starts to bleed into category three, as MCR has stated that Vampires was their first attempt of writing a more dancey feeling song. Category 3 also has Drowning Lessons and Lady of Sorrows, uh, both of which fit pretty well. Category 4 also isn't super clear cut because Headfirst for Halos is a very ambitious, very technical song for them, but Skylines and Turnstiles is a little bit more of the statement piece of the album. I mean, the song itself is basically the birthplace of the band, and like some of the other midpoint singles, it doesn't really tie into some of the direct lyrical content of the rest of the album, but still gets the general feeling across. Monroeville's a great fit for Category 5, cooling things down after those songs, but then Category 6, compared to the other albums, is very empty with Best Day Ever. And then Cubicles also kind of fits into Category 6, but also takes the place of 7, and then Demolition Lovers is basically category seven and eight together with the intro versus the rest of the song. Then with Danger Days, it begins fitting basically perfectly with Nana being an amazing opener, Bulletproof being a great drivey kind of song. It's maybe the least directly driving rhythmically, but especially in lyrical theme and just the general feeling of the song, it still feels like I should be out on the road. And then we get our full on dance song, Planetary, as well as another kind of poppy song, Sing. The main problem with Danger Days is that it's category four, it's kind of thesis song, isn't really there. I feel like maybe it comes a little earlier with Sing, but I guess I would put only hope here, but it's also kind of category five. I don't know, this part of this album with the structure is definitely the weakest. And then there's a massive category six moving from Party Poison all the way down to Destroy Ya. And then we finally get back on track with number seven cooling us down with Kids From Yesterday and ending with a big rambunctious bang with Vampire Money. However, the other two albums fit perfectly. Helena is a fantastic opener, which is then followed by the non-stop quick and dirty give them hell. And then one of the strongest third categories with To The End and Guys Like Us In Prison. Number four isn't so much of a thesis statement with the whole album, but it does fill more of the role as a really big single with I'm Not Okay. After that, we calm down a little bit with Ghost Of You and to an extent Jet Set Life. Despite the choruses of those songs, it brings a little bit of quietness into the album. Category 6 brings us Thank You For The Venom, Hang Em High, and Death Wish. Category 7 reels back a little bit for one last time with Cemetery Drive, followed by the really big explosive conclusion of the story, which is I Never Told You What I Do For A Living. And then Black Parade fits best due to the nature of the album and the storytelling. The End and Dead is like the cleanest, best intro that you're probably gonna get for any of these albums. Then Disappear comes on after that, just beating you down and keeping it going. Sharpest Lies fills number three, a pretty dancey song once again. Number four, the thesis statement for MCR as a whole, but definitely this album is Welcome to the Black Parade, followed by Category 5, I Don't Love You, really bringing it down to that kind of rock ballad feel. As I said, Sticks is really the meat of the album, and you definitely see that here with House of Wolves, Cancer, Mama's Sleep, and Teenagers. At this point, we're kind of just expanding on the patient's feelings and his reflections on his life. So naturally, this is going to be a really huge section. And then we get probably the best number seven of any of them, which is Disenchanted. And the amazing number eight, probably the best closer of any of their albums, which is Famous Last Words. Like I said, it's not a flawless system, but it does cover MCR albums pretty well. Bullets has the most bleed with the least songs. I feel like this is because they were still kind of getting the hang of what they want to sound like. It is a pretty thin album overall. It really doesn't hook as much as the other albums because of this kind of looser construction. I think it's just kind of throwing some ideas out there. Then with Danger Days, it's almost the opposite. It's jam packed full of songs, but just doesn't really have that central thesis song, like I said. This might be why people don't really enjoy that album as much as the others. Part six is definitely the fullest, but without that central moment, it starts to feel a little bit fillery. Three Cheers and Black Parade both have absolutely no bleed, no fat, they're super well constructed. The first half establishes everything you need to know about the album, and the second half expands on that even more. Black Parade is still definitely my favorite though, I feel like it has the strongest beginning, middle, and end. What I'm curious about 
about now is if this same formula is used by other bands or how it would work for them. I would love to look at some other bands albums and apply this formula rearranging the songs and see if it would help or hurt them. Or I wonder if other bands have their own very consistent formula between their albums. If you've noticed these kind of things or would like to see this formula applied to other albums let me know and I would totally be into doing another video on it. But for now let me know what you think of my observations if there's anything to them or uh, if there's not, let's just talk about how great MCR is and how happy we are that they're back. Either way, thanks for watching.